Hello, I'm David Monteiro and I'm a tour guide. You can find more information in my website at davidmonteiro.me. Thank you for joining me here and I hope you will enjoy your time. Hello, on this episode I'm going to speak about port wine. It is a long episode and addressed to those who, for whatever reason, want to be introduced in this subject. If it is your case, please stay with me. What is port wine? The port wine drinkers. The reactions to the idea of a port wine tasting are the most diverse. They can even be funny in some way. Concerning port wine, I can divide the world in three different kinds of people. Those who do not drink alcohol, so they are not interested in this episode. The Portuguese, who are born or live in the birthplace of port wine. And the rest of the world. Naturally, I will focus my attention on the last two groups of people. What do people think about port wine? The Portuguese always find interesting the idea of a wine tasting, whatever the wine is. In Portugal, generally speaking, the image of port wine is associated with prestige, wine cellars in Gaia, luxury estates in the Douro Valley, expensive wines, etc. Also very present is the image of fancy wine-related events, like the Rabelo wooden boat tours, the Douro River several days tours. However, many Portuguese also associate the image of port with the memory slash experience of a too sweet wine without making it very pleasant. A side note, although I don't share that feeling, however, there are plenty of reasons to explain why many people have this somewhat unpleasant feeling about port. Port wine is an expensive wine because it's a very labor-intensive product. There were always very inexpensive ports one could buy, but they are not good at all. They are awfully sweet and alcoholically sharp, so the tasting experience couldn't be a pleasant one. Well, concerning the rest of the world, there are no significant differences between the various cultures related to what they think about port wine. A mixture of curiosity about port wine, but always mentioning they have tasted port wine at a specific moment? It is that sweet red wine. It's a Portuguese wine. <laughs> Although in my experience, only a small percentage of people know it is a Portuguese wine. When I think of the significant differences between the Portuguese and the rest of the world concerning port wine, Perhaps I won't be mistaken if I say The Portuguese have tasted port wine more often. The Portuguese have an idea of luxury associated with port and all things related. The rest of the world does not spontaneously recognize this cause and effect relation. Foreigners seem to be more enthusiastic about drinking port wine than the Portuguese. As you can realize, this reflection is being done in a carefree way, with some humor and not basing these statements on nothing else than my own professional experience. I have no data to support these ideas, nor this is the place for such concerns. Even so, it is evident a tremendous general lack of knowledge about what port wine is and about its existing varieties. The variety of port wine is so great that it is often said, if you think you don't like port wine, it is because you have not yet tasted the port wine you will enjoy. Please think about these questions. Did you know there is an extra dry port wine which means being almost not sweet at all? Did you know there is a white port wine and a rosé, I mean pink port? How many types of red port do you know? I hope to be able to contribute to the awakening of curiosity about port wine. What is port wine? 
For a historical retrospective on how port wine started to be produced, please access to the article Background of the Douro Valley Wine Region on the link down below. To get a more detailed idea of the region where both port and Douro wines grow and are produced, I will invite you to access to a map in the description you will find also down below. As you may have read it in the article mentioned above, right before the time of the birth of port wine as we know it today, there was a different kind of port wine, which was fortified table wine. In this episode, I will not describe it. Having that said, let's learn a little more about port wine. However, before we continue, we need to have clear that table wine or still wines produced in the Douro Valley are called Douro wine. Let's talk about the most important grape varieties. Please take some time to read port wine labels in a supermarket or a liquor store. On the label area where grapes are identified, you will notice they are the same grapes as the ones used to produce Douro wines. Naturally, you will have to consider that you will not see exactly the same grape varieties in the two different wines, of course. However, after reading some labels, you will find the most used grapes both for making port and or wine. On the red wines, we will have Toriga Nacional, Toriga Franca, Tinta Roriz, Tinto Cão, Tinta Barroca, Tinta Amarela and Sozão. On the white wines, you will find Cotega, Malvasia Fina, Gouveio, Rabigato, Muscatel Galego Branco and Viuzinho. The grapes mentioned before are the most used grape varieties in most wines produced in the Douro Valley. This means both port wine and Douro wines use the same grape varieties. If port wine and Douro wines are made from the same grapes, what makes these wines to be so different? The answer is simple, it's the production method. In a very simplistic way, we can say that the production of Douro wine has the following steps, as does the majority of still wines. Harvest, stomping, fermentation, maturation and bottling. However, for a port, everything is different a couple of days after the moment the fermentation starts. While the fermentation of a Douro wine can take between 6 to 7 days to go through, for a port wine is very different. For the production of port wine, after 2 or 3 days of fermentation, we will stop this process by adding wine spirits. In the course of this episode, I will tell you some of the criteria for knowing when to stop fermenting and I will also tell you how much wine spirits to add. So, why stop the fermentation? By stopping the fermentation process and adding wine spirits, we will have a naturally sweet wine with only the grapes sugar and without the need to add any other kind of sugar and a wine with the alcohol content between 19 and 22 degrees resulting from the addition of a 77% high quality wine spirits. A side note. The exception should be noted for a specific typology of white port that has 16.5% of alcohol. There are several kinds of port wine and each one has its own specific formula for obtaining the final product we drink. Let me give you some tips about when to stop the fermentation, although some wines are sweeter and others are drier. The fermentation of an extra dry port is stopped when the sugar concentration is less than 40 grams per liter. For a very sweet port, the sugar concentration must exceed 130 grams per liter. For most port wines, we will have a sugar concentration in the fermentation between 90 and 130 grams per liter. 
being even more frequent to have between 100 and 120 grams per liter. As you can understand, the sugar concentration decreases over the time of the fermentation process. The longer the fermentation lasts, the more sugar will be transformed into alcohol and therefore lower the sugar concentration. Now, regarding the proportions of wine spirits to be added to the fermented product, please follow me. Most barrels have a capacity of 550 liters. 115 liters of wine spirits is usually added to every 435 liters of wine in fermentation to total the 550 liters of final product. Since year 2012, the addition of wine spirits ranges from 60 to 120 liters. When adding the wine spirits, the yeasts stop fermenting the wine. Having done this, do we have port wine? Well, we can say this is the beginning to have port wine, but depending on port type we want to produce, we may have to consider other essential steps. It is time to describe several types of port wine and I will take the opportunity to explain their singularities. Types of port wine. If you do some internet research about different types of port wine, in most articles you will find explanations dividing port wine into ruby, tawny and white port. I prefer to do something entirely different. I will divide them into rosé or pink, white and red. And I have a reason for that. This is not a technical article, but an, an entertaining one. And, from my experience, I have learned that people understand it better when I start explanation from the beginning. So, let's do it like that. Rosé port wine, or pink. It has no subcategories. Produced from red grapes, but with little contact with the skin of the grapes during a soft maceration. These are wines to be consumed at young age and, in my opinion, at low temperatures, between 8 to 10 degrees Celsius. The rosé port wine is widely used for cocktails or just on the rocks. As far as I know, the first rosé port to be produced was Croft Pink, dating from the beginning of the 21st century. White port wine Usually made from white grapes, in which the subcategories are very dry or extra dry, dry, half dry, sweet, and lagrima means a tear in Portuguese, also referred as very sweet. Tradition demands that white port wine shouldn't age a lot, and after two or three years in a 20,000 liter barrels or more, the wine is ready to be consumed. However, tradition is no longer what it used to be and some white ports have been aging for tens of years and they are excellent. There is an interesting curiosity. When a white port ages, it turns amber color, getting closer to its aged red cousins. White port wine is an excellent wine for appetizers. Try drinking a white port wine such as Lágrima of Ramos Pinto, together with a wedding. What is a wedding? Well, a wedding is a fig with an almond inside and you will have an excellent tasting experience. Nowadays it's fashionable to drink port tonics. It is a long drink made with one third of extra dry white port, two thirds of tonic water, ice, lemon, and a peppermint leaf. Top notch! You can find different recipes for this drink, taste them and let me know your winner. Red port wine. I left the reds for last because they need more extended 
and elaborate explanations. Red port wines can be grouped in two large families, Ruby and Tony. All the remaining denominations are derived from these two families. Ruby Rubies are wines with a solid red color, hence its name Ruby. They are kept in big barrels called balseiros, large containers looking like half barrels standing straight on the floor on top of short, skinny legs. These balseiros can hold 20,000 liters of wine or more. Some balseiros can hold up to 125,000 liters of wine. Ruby ages for two to three years in those big barrels, the balseiros, where, due to the low surface slash volume ratio, it gets little air, producing slow oxidation. The slow oxidation process is the reason why it remains its intense color, otherwise it will get not a desirable brownish color. To better explain this relationship between oxidation and wine color, I ask you to think of an apple. When we take a bite out of the apple, the area that will be exposed to the air will turn brownish. The same happens to the wine and with the time passing by, the initial red color will turn into a brownish color or dark amber due to oxidation process. In this ruby family, we can find very special subcategories such as ruby, reserva, late bottle vintage or LBV and vintage. There are other subcategories, but I will not detail them now. Without overextend myself, I will explain two of these subcategories. So let's go to the first, vintage. It is the highest rating a port wine can have. This wine is produced with grapes from a single exceptional year. When the grapes are from one single year and one single quinta means wine estate and was declared a vintage, so it can be called vintage single quinta. Vintage port wines will age for two to three years in a balseiro and then will be bottled. The sediments with which they are bottled will help these wines to continue to evolve for a long time, being years or even centuries. However, after bottling, it is always advisable not to consume them immediately, waiting between 3 to 4 years as a minimum until you can drink them. The history of vintage is somehow related to the history of its bottles. To age a vintage, it is necessary to lay down the bottle, but in the 18th century, the bottles were kind of bulky and fat and did not remain in a good position when they lay down. New bottles like the ones we can see nowadays had to be introduced. The first vintage mentioned by some historians dates from 1775. If you want to buy port wine to store and age, a vintage is a natural choice. It is an excellent wine by itself, but you can try vintage with the chocolate, the darker the better, with sharp cheeses and some fruits such as melon. LBV, it stands for Late Bottled Vintage. As the name implies, it is a wine that was declared vintage, but it was bottled later than a regular vintage. These wines generally, but not necessarily, are of a lower quality level than a vintage. The LBV will spend between 4 to 6 years in a vat and then to be bottled. Please bear in mind what was said for a vintage, will age for 2 to 3 years in a barrel. In this case, because they have spent more time in the barrels than a vintage, as soon as they are bottled, they can be consumed immediately. However, you can store this wine for a more extended period. These wines have a quality level very close to what you can find in a vintage, offering the advantage of being ready to be consumed right after being bottled and not having to wait as you should do for the vintages. As far as I know, 
Taylor was the first producer of an LBV in 1970, with wines from the 1965 harvest. Soon after, other brands followed, trying to mirror their success. Tony. These are wines that age in oak casks for extended periods. At the time of their production, they spend the first four years on average in large barrels, such as a ruby. Still, later they are transferred to 550 liter barrels, where they will have more significant contact with wood, getting more air and, consequently, having higher oxidation. There are cases of farms using barrels with 600 or 660 liters larger barrels than the traditional ones. To identify a Tony in a store is not difficult. Apart from you can read Tony on the label, and except for the very young Tonys, the aged wines will have the aging years written on the label. Thus, whenever you find a port in which you see 10, 20, 30 years or more on the label, you will know you have a Tony in front of you. There are other subcategories for Tonys, but I will not detail them now. These aged wines results from mixtures of several lots that give them characteristics of the age they advertise. Therefore, if we have a 30 years old description on the bottle, it does not mean that the wine was being waiting for 30 years to be drunk. It is the result of a blend with several wines whose average age is 30 years or the final product is a wine with the characteristics of a 30 years old wine. Given their slow oxidation process, Tonys have a paler color than ruby, I can say it is a brownish or even an amber color. Very old Tonys are among the most expensive port wines you can find. As soon as you buy a bottle of Tony, you can consume it immediately. Please remember, aging has already happened and it ages very little in the bottle. Served fresh, the younger Tony can be an excellent aperitif, but at room temperature goes very well with dry fruits, chocolate-based desserts and various cheeses. However, if you have a Tony aged 30 or 40, you may want to taste it without nothing else. Stop doing what you are doing, sit comfortably, preferably with a friend and enjoy. With this I hope to have given you an idea about what port wine is. However, I know that many related matters were left out, such as a little more history of each of these wines and estates, how does a wine become a vintage, the importance of the wine spirit in the port wine, the differences between brandy and wine spirits, port wine and the Portuguese culture, and so much more. In future episodes I will develop some of these themes. Also, many technical details were left out and I hope I can have a professional to develop the theme. Hello again, thank you for spending your time with me. I hope you enjoyed yourself and please do not hesitate to get in touch with me if you feel the need to. You can check my contact details at my website davidmonteiro.me. The way you can help me is to share this post with your friends and family if you liked it. It is easy for you and extremely important for me. Keep yourself happy and safe and I hope for your next visit. Bye!